Hi everyone, how are we all? I hope you are all well and safe. Welcome back to a brand new video and it is June, favorites time. What? <laughs> this month I'm coming at you with some random favorites, some like bathroom bits, um, the eyeshadow quad of dreams, um, a book update, and the pieces from my wardrobe that I've just been wearing on repeat. So let's get started. My number one random favorite is the Peloton app. Oh my word, this has changed the game for me, guys. The app, you can get it on your phone, you can log in like on your laptop. If you've got an iPad, there's an app for that as well. It costs $12.99 in the UK, and I think you can get a 30-day free trial, which is amazing. And it means you have access to all of their spin classes, boot camp, yoga, stretching, meditation, running, just so, just all of the things. All of the things, like literally, thousands of classes on there. And if you can get yourself a spin bike and you can set yourself up with the Peloton app in front of you, you basically feel like you've got the real deal, but for $12.99 a month, it is incredible. Um, so I've been renting a bike from my local studio and then I put the Peloton app on my laptop in front of me. I put a fan like this close to my face and I have thoroughly been enjoying spinning slash singing and dancing in the front room. It's, it's, it's changed the game, guys. It has seriously, seriously changed the game. I thoroughly adore Cody Rigsby's classes. Oh my word, he is hilarious. He plays Britney Spears basically every class. Um, <laughs> we did Black Eyed Peas, shut up. Oh my word, what a tune to spin to. What a tune to spin to. Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Ariana Grande. I mean, it's just, pop mania. It's absolutely brilliant. It's like making me excited to work out and anything that makes me excited to work out gets a thumbs up from me. So I'll link up a vlog here if you want to see the setup that we have in our front room. But honestly, I'm rediscovering some old bangers as well. It's, it's just brilliant. <laughs> My second round of favorite of the month is our podcast. Yes. Mine and Lily's podcast is back. We've rebranded it slightly. It's now called At Home With Lily and Anna instead of At Home With. And instead of like going to other people's homes and like being the guest in their home, the idea is that now you're the guest in our homes. And it's basically a take on our IG lives that we were doing weekly at the weekend. It's like, it's very similar actually. We sit there, part one is very similar to those IG lives. It's like talking through our top five things of the week, things that we've cooked, eaten, drunk, things we've seen online, maybe something that we purchased, like what's been the highlight of our week, basically just me and Lily like having our weekly friendship catch up. And then the second part of the podcast is based on questions that you guys have submitted on the Facebook page that we have for the podcast. I'll link that down below for you. It's just been really fun to like do something different. We've always wanted to like resurrect the podcast, but just never worked out how to. Like At Home With was brilliant, but it was a production. <laughs> like getting everyone's diaries like correct and in the right place. Like there was one time I was halfway up to London. I got all the way to Gatwick and then the people canceled on us. Like it was a... Mm. <laughs> Obviously, Lily's up in London, I'm down in Brighton, and the fact that we can record this from our respective homes and just like have a little Skype, it's fabulous. Really, really enjoying that. So let us know what you think, check it out, I'll link it down below for you. But now it's time to get on to the good stuff. I like to cover bathroom bits, and I have one thing that I love and one thing that I hate, but I feel like I need to talk about it and also show you what I love instead of it. It'll make sense when you see it. The first thing is this. Again, this is something that I've mentioned in a vlog, and it is the Allies of Skin Retinol and Peptides Overnight Mask. Um, so I've been using retinol in my routine now for sort of six, seven, eight months. I don't know when I bought that bottle. I'm sure I could find out, but basically I'd used up the, I think it was the Synergy Skin, um, and it was their Essential Vitamin A, I think it was called. I was using that, I've just used it up. I liked it, it was really nice. And then when I get scent stuff, like anytime there's been like a retinol thing, I've sort of put it to the side and I'm like, oh, when I finish that up, I'm gonna give that a go. So I started giving this a go, and this is a nightly treatment. So I'm guessing this is not super, super strong. Oh my gosh, you're gonna get a load of irritation from this type retinol. It's a very like entry level retinol product. But I am noticing such a difference in my skin. I'm always wary to talk about things when I haven't used them for like a seriously long time, and this product is super 
but pricey. So definitely like, I'm gonna try and not talk about it for too long and like give you an update when I have like used the bottle up as to how I feel about it. But I would just say in terms of like my skin texture, in terms of breakouts, in terms of scarring that I've got on my skin, I'm noticing real like real shifts, which is very exciting because I've had pretty like explosive skin in this area. I know it doesn't look like it on camera, but I've got makeup on, I've got lights on, you know? In real life, I've really struggled around this area recently. Not even recently, probably for about like the last year. So to wake up and like not have a new spot to pop, I was very excited. So I will keep you updated with this. As I mentioned, it is very pricey. So I wanna give this a good test before I give it like a true seal of approval. But something that doesn't get the seal of approval is this. This is the Tan Lux Super Glow Body Hyaluronic Self Tan Serum. I love this tanning brand. The Wonder Oil, love. The Gradual, love. Super Glow Body, mm, not into. This is the body version of the serum that they've got. It's like a gradual tanner with hyaluronic acid in for your face. Um, I really, really like the face serum. The body serum, uh-uh, doesn't work for me. I think where it is a clear gel, it goes onto the skin like with barely any tackiness, which I'm into. Like if you don't like to feel like you have tan on your skin, I think you'll really like this product. However, because because there's almost no texture to it and there's no color to it, it's really hard to see where you've been, where you haven't been, and I just end up doing a terrible, terrible job of tanning whenever I use this. I found I got really streaky in like the armpit area, I got streaky over my knee, it just, yeah, I'm not an experienced enough tanner to use this. If you are better at that, of like working out where you've been and where you haven't been, I think you would really like this. As I mentioned, the shade, the sun-kissed glow that it gives is incredible, beautiful, not orange, not like super faux looking at all. But for me, I just get, I get, I get myself in a right old mess with that. So I just wanna reiterate the fact that the gradual is for me. This is their Illuminating Gradual Tan Lotion and I just love it. And because it does have, it's actually, it's very thin. Um, Alana likes this. Oh, phew. She mentioned it in her May Favourites and I was like, whew, thank God for that. But she did mention the texture of it is super thin. Like it's very lotion-y, but because of that, it's very easy to apply and absorbs really quickly. But because there is that slight lotion texture, it's just easier to tell where you have applied it. So I don't have any of the problems I have with this, with this one. This is still like, mm. Heart, heart face emoji for me. Right, let's talk makeup. I've got like the basics on my face right now, but I do have a couple of things that I would like to talk about. Um, the first ones are the Fenty. These are the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzers. Um, and this is in the shade Butter Biscuit, but I also have Macchiato and I also have Amber. And I'm liking all three of these really. Um, I mentioned it in a vlog a couple of weeks back. I will link that vlog up there for you. Just sort of what I want to do going forward with like the products I promote on my channel and how I will no longer be using anything that has like a really crap shade range. So something like the Chanel bronzer that currently only comes in one shade, that is like a no-go around here anymore. I mean, if it comes out in other shades, yes, come back into my life. That's brilliant. But just currently it doesn't cater to a wide range of skin tones. So therefore it's out. Um, but the Fenty cream bronzers do cater for a much wider range of skin tones and it's just a really nice like cream bronzer alternative. I just used Amber there as a contour shade. And then I've almost been using a mixture. Ooh, I've basically been using a mixture of the two as a bronzer. Like I quite like both of them. Butter Biscuit is the a slightly paler shade. Macchiato is a little bit richer. So I guess for me, it almost works as a bit of like a summery bronzer and then a bronzer that I'd probably use a little bit more in the winter time. But I've just been taking, whoop, taking my brush into both. I do like it on the same brush that I usually use with the Chanel and I just kind of dust it all over. I really like the finish of them. It blends really nicely. Just good things to say. Oh, I love applying bronzer. So relaxing. I find the formula quite sheer in a good way, um, which just means it's really like nice and easy to build up and not go like too overboard. Love it. Okay, just had a half time FaceTime with Lily as she was also getting ready to film a video. That was nice. I saw Grey, she did some walking training, very entertaining. Anyway, on to perhaps my favorite favorite of the month. Oh yes, this is, oh, 
I mean, like, just, just put a heart, just put a heart around this. This, this is, <laughs> it is a MAC quad and I've put in it four powder eyeshadows, basically my four favorite powder eyeshadows. And whenever I mention this on Instagram, I always get a couple of DMs, like a couple of days later that are like, please, can you remind me of all of the shades that were in that palette? Um, so this is the video. I'm gonna share with you all of the shades that are in here. Do a quick little swatch. Let's have a quick chat about them. I'm trying to condense my makeup collection down. So this was just a good way of like putting everything in one palette, making it like nice and easy to get to, and also just streamlining. We're here for the streamlining. So there are four shades in here. Three of them are MAC shades. Two of them have been discontinued. And one of them is limited edition, which I know is super unhelpful, but I will try my best to like find them in stock, give you all of the information that I've got. So let's like start with this one in the top corner. This one is actually the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow in caramel. Easy to find. This is like not a problem to get hold of. And I, I think this might be my favorite shade actually out of all four of these. It's just a nice kind of rich, warm, orangey brown definitely swatches a little bit more orange on my eye than it does here but i i just love this shade it's very easy just to dip in and put a really sheer layer on the eye or really build up the color absolutely love that one so that one is anastasia beverly hills caramel then this one here is mac uninterrupted annoyingly discontinued however i think i found it in stock on asos so i will link that down below for you um this is more of like a camel shade I'd say. It's this one here. It's like not as ready and perhaps a little bit more yellowy in tone. Again, one that I really enjoy. Then this sort of more muted shade is Sober, which again, discontinued, but I managed to find it in stock on ASOS. I just bought it in the pan and then like de-panned it. How 2010 of me. <laughs> and I have to say, before they discontinued Sober, I think they changed the formula and just like completely changed everything about it. So for me, this reads more as like almost got a bit of a shimmer in it now, which I'm not like crazy about. And looks a bit more like how I picture Mac Omega to be, that sort of dusky gray e brown. I actually am not so crazy about this these days it's probably my least favorite out of the four of these much preferred the old sober that was a bit like richer and a bit more camely and then this one here that kind of reads more pink when you put them all together this is a mac eyeshadow in paint by umber this is limited edition it has been out of stock but i have seen it recently come back into stock on the mac website um so that is where i've managed to find it and that is this one here and this is definitely more like pinky red actually very very similar to the tone of our bedding and i really really like that one it definitely doesn't read as pink on the eyes it reads a little bit more orangey um so there you go so that's kind of all of the shades swatched for you they're basically all matte aside from sober which has a bit of shimmer in it but as i mentioned is new sober we don't like new sober as much as we like old sober um i think today i'm gonna go for the anastasia one because i think that is my favorite out of all of these and just to show you how quick and easy it is to build up on the eye that's just like one dab swelled all over the lid i'm like yeah okay basically kind of done like my eyeshadow application <laughs> is not sophisticated it's not fancy i just like a light wash of something something on the lids there you go. This one definitely needs a little bit more. Perfect. I'm really super happy with that. Um, I do tend to prime it with the NARS primer under any eyeshadows just because my eyelids crease up all and basically any eyeshadows, especially powder ones. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just so happy with this quad. It just makes my makeup application so easy that everything's here and I can be like, if I fancy a powder eyeshadow, the one that I wanna wear is probably in this quad, if it's a neutral. Um, someone said this is like the meme when you're like, all of these shades are different and everyone's like, mm, they kind of look quite similar to me. All of these shades are different, look. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so the next category is fashion and this is a very, very easy one. I actually have like a mini summer haul coming at you very, very soon. Um, but basically 
anything from Arquette that is linen. <laughs> um, I did actually work with Arquette on a linen campaign like earlier in the summer. I loved it then and that love has just continued and I've bought many more linen things from them. Um, but I think my favorite thing are the linen oversized shirts. Um, so I initially had a, like a light kind of biscuity colored one from when I worked with them. And then I've also purchased it in white. It is what I'm wearing today. And then I've also purchased it in black as well. And they're just comfortable, like the most multifunctional piece. Like I don't need to tell you how multifunctional a white shirt <laughs> is in your wardrobe, but it's just what I find myself gravitating towards basically most days. Um, there is more to it than just the shirts, but I will save that for the haul. Um, but yeah, basically Arquette linen, thumbs up. Then finally, let's talk about books. I have quite a few to mention this month, some really, really cracking ones that I highly, highly recommend that you read. Um, firstly, I read Commonwealth. That is also by Anne Patchett. I was super, super into the Dutch house. I read that one last month and everyone was like, if you love the Dutch house, try Commonwealth. It's kind of her like next highest rated book. Um, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. In my head, I'm struggling to decipher it a bit from the next book that I read because that was quite similar. But if I remember rightly, Commonwealth was about two families. The mum of one family had an affair with the dad from another family and it's kind of how the children and the parents and like all of their lives intertwine over the years. Basically, I've realized I love intergenerational family drama and that book is exactly that. After that, I read The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. And again, that fits in that category. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'd say it was long. And, and that's kind of hard with these types of books because if they're short, if they're more like a kind of 280 pages, like 350 pages, there's normally so many characters that if the perspective of the narration switches between characters, you're a bit like, oh, I didn't really get to know everyone because the book can be quite short. Whereas this one is, I think about like 550 pages. Like someone was like, you, you could knock someone out with this book. So it was longer, but then you feel like you've really got to know everyone. And that was about a family and their four daughters. And again, like, how everything changes throughout the years. Um, thoroughly enjoyed both of them. If you're into that genre, you're gonna like those. The next book was one that I had actually pre-ordered. Somebody on the edit Facebook page had been given like a pre-release copy to review and was like, oh my gosh, this book is amazing. I think you will really, really enjoy it. So I pre-ordered it. And actually when you pre-order it on the Kindle, it automatically downloads on the day that it gets released. So that is great. And it's called The Vanishing Half by Britt Benet. Absolutely love this book. This is like a solid five-star book from me. It's the story of two black twins and how they have very different lives. They eventually kind of go their separate ways and it's kind of how they go about that, how they navigate that. And then one of them has a life where she presents as white and it basically explores colorism and identity and like really picks apart topics that I've never read about before. It was so, so interesting. Goes on to talk about their daughters. Like, I don't wanna to give too much away, but again, it is like an intergenerational family drama, but also pulling in all of these references and stories and yeah, things that I haven't explored before, things that I haven't read before. Highly, highly recommend, I think you will love that. Then I read Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge and Oh my word, like you've just got to read this book. This is like topping bestseller list like across the world and it's a brilliant, brilliant book. It's basically Rennie's story of how she's dealt with racism in the UK and how she's written about racism throughout her career and the challenges that she has faced from white people over what she's written. Like it was so so interesting, so beautifully put together, so beautifully written. And I feel like if you're having conversations in your life with like friends or family members where people just aren't getting it, I'd say this is a really good book to pass on to them because not only does it detail Rennie's like personal experiences that are obviously tough to read, it's it's got fact in it. Like it's cold, hard, facts and figures and statistics, things that you just can't argue with. And I feel like there'll be people who are like, I just don't get it. And I feel like this book just presents, <laughs> presents the anti-racism argument very clearly and describes racism in the UK and how it is so ingrained and why it is so ingrained 
so, so, so well. So again, one that I highly, highly recommend. And then I'm currently reading I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. And I think that is her first autobiography that she has put together. I think she has done many throughout the years, but that one is the first one. So I'm currently reading that. I'm about 20% of the way through at the time of recording this video. And again, something that I'm thoroughly enjoying, like Maya's words are so poetic. It's so beautiful. You find yourself rereading it because you're just like, oh gosh, that is such a lovely phrase. And I really want to like get my head around that. So thoroughly enjoying that one as well. I will link all of these down below for you. And you know what? My eyes have just gone to the side because I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about this book, which actually arrived in the post as a gift from Caroline this morning. Morning, but I have pre-ordered a copy which should be here by the time this video goes live. I have a feeling by the time this video goes live, this is out. It's out now for you all to buy and peruse and just feast on. Basically, it is Skincare, The Ultimate No-Nonsense Guide by my friend, Caroline Hirons. Hi! Ah, Caroline! I am so proud. This is a tomb. It is so, so packed with just like, information, information about everything. <laughs> skin types and conditions, a good skincare routine, like debunking myths, your kit, when life happens, like all of the things that can wreak havoc with your skin. And my favorite bit that I've seen so far, it's just called Get in the Sea. And it's just a list of things that she believes need to get in the sea, AKA face wipes, AKA sheet mask. Oh, Caroline, I do like a sheet mask. To be fair, I'm just using up the ones I've got. I'm not buying any new ones, but yeah, it's just funny and brilliant. Oh my God, I've only just seen, I've realized Caroline's face on that page. I love you. I really, really love you. And I feel very proud to be your friend. Very proud to have my hands on a personalized signed copy. I feel like I'm like, I feel like this is gold. <laughs> but yes, it is available for you guys. I'm sure a load of you have pre-ordered it like I did already and you've already got it. But if you haven't, pick it up. Go Caroline. So that is it for June. I hope everyone is well and safe. Sending lots of love your way. And I will see you soon with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.